Hello and good evening, my name is Morganon. I bid you all welcome back to Risen. Your apparently monthly episode at this point. At this rate, we'll be done with this series by 2027. Anyway, before we begin, I want to uh, give a shout out to my friend Vana, who provided a fix for some FPS bugs that this game gets. It is a Piranha Bytes game after all, so that thing is kind of prone to happening. Um, there's a little clip I showed of my character basically leaping out of the stratosphere. And apparently that's one of the high FPS bugs. I wasn't quite getting it until I got a new graphics card. And that apparently put me over the edge. So, thanks Vana for that. His patch is linked in the description below. It works on the Steam version, no problem. Now, speaking of technical issues, I managed to get my quick save button fixed by basically reinstalling the game. So... That's what we're dealing with. It's back on F8. Now, last time we did have a chat with Lorenzo, and he wants to uh, lure, lead us to a uh, an apparently temple where we can pick up some treasure. Now, I warn you, don't do that until you fought him in the arena. And since we're kind of in on you know heading in that direction anyway, let's take I care of that now. Bet. I'll fight Lorenzo in the arena. That'll be worth watching. So, it's a bit weird. I think I said it last time. All your stakes are two to one odds. The only change is how much the stake is. I, I don't really get it. How about we sort out our differences in the arena? A show fight? Why not? It'll get me out of this place for a while. Now, normally I'd be inclined to do all the arena fights in one go. But I really just want to take care of Lorenzo now so that we can get that out of the way. I'll do the other fights when it becomes a little bit more relevant. But anyway, this is the first mano el mano combat that we've had, other than uh, the bow body. So the rules are the same. You really want to try your best to get behind them. Keep up your shield the whole time you're not attacking. Uh, we don't have any nuanced techniques like um, parries as of yet. NPCs generally just do one attack, but occasionally they will resort to combos. Um, and really the best thing to do is perform a dodge that avoids their attack entirely. That's your best shot at getting behind them, but it's also the way you make sure that they don't end up dodging away from your counter attack. As you can see, if he lands any hits, tends to do the back pedal that gets him out of the way. Even if the hits against your shield. And the uh, strafe dodge doesn't really do much if you're far away. Because your angular distance is not as distant. Now they love to get themselves into walls, which is really annoying. Ow. It can be tricky. Yeah. Uh. Oh dear. Some of their in some of their animations, especially the lateral swings, have much more of an early telegraph, and that's really your best shot. But we're talking a matter of milliseconds there. Uh. Oh balls. Now, as you notice, he picked up something, and that was actually my gold. Although they don't take all your money. I don't know how much they take, but... We can redo the fight beating. as many times as we want. I want to fight you again, in the arena. Is this just a fight, or more of an official date? Now, it is funny that you actually get a little bit more dialogue. Oh god, I don't have my weapons. Oh, I cancelled it by accident. Is this... You get as many attempts as you want, but notice how he gets his health back to full. Yeah. 
Now, you can, if you want, just kind of lay into them and hope that some of your swings get through. When they're backed up against the wall, that tends to happen a little bit more often, but sometimes they just get stupid and drop their guard. Definitely more, more reliable technique once you get the hang of it is the sideward's dodge. Ow. Fortunately, I don't play this game often enough to have kept the hang of it. Ah, balls! I don't usually lose this much. Yeah, they take about half your money every time. But, obviously, once you win the duel, you can get it all back. It's starting, a bit, it's starting to feel a bit like the Black Knight scene. Right, I'll do you for that. You're what? Come here. What are you going to do, bleed on me? Ah. Now, if you're really cheeky like that, you can try and get some early hits in. I hate when they backpedal, because that really throws off everything. Oh dear. So you got a counter on me there, which is real fucky. Oh my god, just whiffed. Storm is really adding to the drama. It's also very annoying. Oh god, I got scared. Ah, fuck. I almost no hit this, this particular match. Why is he getting so weird now? Ah! Uh. Victory is mine. So there, we got all the money they stole from us back. You're gonna talk to me a bit nicer from now on. Fuck off. Fuck off, I shan't. First things first, let's get our money back. Or our, our wager from... Craig here. Now the fact that you can just keep re-challenging them until you win the duel... You beat him. ...is a bit generous, I feel. But, it is what it is. It just saves you from having to save scum if you don't feel like it. All these storms get ridiculous. This isn't a unique problem to Risen 1 either. It seems to happen in Risen 2 all the time. It just gets wild! How many lightnings? It's insanity. Have you come across a piece of a sword blade? The one Oscar's trying to piece together. He wants to make a sword for the Don, I believe. And? And I might have a piece of it. Oscar tried to buy it from me, in fact. But he wasn't offering enough, so I thought I'd hang on to it. Will you sell me your piece of the sword? It'd have to be for, uh... Ooh, no less than 100 gold. I'll give it some thought. That's the deal. So, as far as the sword blade pieces are concerned, you only... You don't actually have to buy any of them. You have the opportunity or the option of just beating up everybody who has one. But we'll sit on that. That's kind of the last thing we have to do here. As far as Lorenzo is concerned, you'll notice he has a different weapon now. He had a rusty sword that we picked up when he went down. And the woodcutter axe he gets as a default. Most um, NPCs just get that as their default weapon because... Uh, this game 
just doesn't have I don't know it doesn't treat fisticuffs as an option even though it is actually a thing as you might know <laughs> it just looks really bad that kick is horrendous it is like literally an ankle kick but yeah NPCs don't really do that so they always get a woodcutter axe as their uh, default weapon uh, when you knock them down and take theirs or even if you pickpocket them, because as we'll see later on, you can actually pickpocket uh, items that NPCs have equipped, which is hilarious. But anyway, he gets that, and the funny thing is it's actually better than the sword he dropped, so beating him up and stealing his weapon actually makes him stronger. All right, let's get the gold from the temple ruin. Ah, oh. so you are interested in the gold. Let's go. Follow me. Well, he promises us great wealth. I trust he shall deliver. This don't look like no temple to me. No. No one can see us here. So let's have ourselves a little chat. What about? I've met people like you. Troublemakers. Right. So we're not here for the temple. You're getting the picture. It's just you and me. And you're gonna give me your gold. Can we talk about this? I don't want to talk. I want you gone. Permanently. Every scummy weasel that turns up here costs me a share of my gold. You not left yet? You not left yet? Your mistake. We'll see. That line doesn't make sense, but hey. Let's get this over. Draw your weapon. See? I knew you were trouble. You were literally trying to hold me up, and you call me trouble. Now, the funny thing about this is you don't need to fight him Not this again. time. You just run away. As soon as he de aggros, fights over, he will never bother you again. So, you're still here. You made me feel so welcome. You want to stay in this shithole? You're welcome to it. The only reason to beat him up again is to pick up his woodcutter's axe, which is barely worth anything. Because his inventory never restocks with any amount of loot. And you don't get XP a second time for beating up NPCs. So there's really no reason to fight him that time. But if you don't, if you fight him, if you do this first, and then challenge him to the arena, he tells you to fuck off. So you miss out on that particular... Uh, do will. Now, I picked up a plant here called a Wanderlust. We picked up a few of those. You see that it gives 10 experience. Now, there's a few different um, plants like that. We got the Dexterity, the Pixie Hat here. The Druid's Hemlock for life energy. There's another one for um, strength as well. It's called like Ogre, Ogre Root or something. We haven't found any of those. Much like gothic, well, the gothic games of yore, the plants will give you a permanent bonus, but they're more valuable being saved to make potions that give an even greater bonus. So that is what I suggest. Anyway, we got Philip up here, who you might recall Brogar told us to get Clay to take over Phil's position. Who are you? Let's talk to Phil you first. You to relieve me? No. Huh. I've been waiting for Clay for hours. The sod should have relieved me long ago. Well, relieve yourself. You're in a swamp, after all. Are you one of the fighters here? I am out here. But when we were in the town, well, sleight of hands, more my thing. Combat's for boneheads. I have a few real skills. Sneaking, opening locks, picking pockets. Proper, honest skills. No violence needed. Sounds good. What are you doing here? Are you standing guard? Yes, but I shouldn't be. I've been here so long, this godforsaken mud soaked through to my feet. Where is this clay? How should I know? In camp, warm and dry, I expect. If he's not here soon, I'm going to leave. What are you guarding? The swamp farmer. 
without him, this place would be bleak. Bleak er. You don't like this place. Does this look like paradise to you? No taverns, no women, just swamp, disease, and mud. Thank the gods for the swamp farmer. At least he brings us our beer. What's here that's worth stealing? Not much, really. The problem's more those bloody animals everywhere. We could easily be overrun by wild boar, or worse. I ain't seen a boar anywhere near here. So all about the place. We got more Bruegel weeds here. I recommend grabbing all these because you can make a decent amount of money with these shortly. New here, right? It's that easy to tell. Ah. Uh, Don's boys already got on your nerves, eh? They're just bored. No imagination, you see. What do you do here? I tend the Bruegelweed here on Robar's farm. It's not the most noble of plants, but it's versatile. You can brew beer with it. You can, should you be of a mind, smoke it as well. The smoke has special properties, if you know what I mean. Oh, I know what you mean. What do you know about the Don? I know enough not to mess with him. We used to be out here all alone, until they swept in and took the place over. But stick to his rules and he's a good man, if a hard taskmaster. Working in the fields isn't easy, but it gets you away from people. Space to think. Hmm. I'm sure you have just a supplement for that thinking. Can you sell me some weed? Or beer? Surely can. And I have more to sell as well, if you're interested. Who is Robar? He's a salt-of-the-earth fellow. He farms this swamp. Well, this field. What do you have to sell? He don't got much. Now, the swamp weed, I can't remember if... I don't think I mentioned this in the last video, but the weed is interesting because um, it offers an XP bonus, but it only gives you 3 XP every time you use it, except the first time it gives you an extra 20 as well. I think that's cooked. So you get 23 XP. Now, at this level, XP is costing... I guess we don't get to tell. Oh. Um... Yeah, with 5,000 XP for the next level. Now, I can't remember if this game does that thing where... It accumulates XP, or if it starts from zero every time you level up. I have to assume it accumulates. But regardless, 3 XP a pop is not worth it. You're much better off just selling all the joints you find. I don't know why I didn't finish talking to Clay, or Phil. Because his thief skills are worth considering. I want to be a better thief. Uh, the thing about Pickpocket is, unlike the Gothic games, or Gothic 2 and 3 at least, I don't believe there's any influence on with dexterity on this skill. Instead, there are three ranks of picking pockets, and... It will tell you in dialogue whether or not you are good enough to do it. So once you have level 3 picking pockets, uh, you can pick any pocket in the world. And there's no chance of failure. So it's a different, much different mechanic, even though it all happens in dialogues much the same as Gothic 2 and 3. We're not going to get that just yet, although I suppose I could. They're really useful skills, no matter- Oh my god, the storm is just rolling in, and it don't give a fuck. Can I just, like, quick load to get rid of it? It is so unbelievably loud and bombastic. Um, yeah, thief skills are pretty much good all the time. Nope, that didn't solve it. Anyway. There's no alternative to picking pockets, but there is a open locks rune or spell that we can get later on. But we're not going to get that rune anytime soon, even if we go for a mage. So level one lock picking is probably worth it regardless. Unless you want to just catalog every chest you come across and save it. Um, I'm a little bit hesitant to do picking pockets, but 
Maybe we will. I'm one. I said I was gonna cling to my um, learning points pretty strongly early on, but I think both of these are worth it. Can you teach me about pickpocketing? Well, first off, you can't rob someone who's keeping an eye on his purse. Fastest way to trouble. That much I'd worked out for myself. All right, all right. Try talking to them, okay? Ask them a question. Keep their concentration, their eyes on you. Then you can lift the loot. That's uh, kind of funny. Um, there are sleight of hand tricks that people do by holding you in conversation, but literally stealing from your pockets. It's not typically one of them. That's usually something you do when a person is distracted at something other than you. Can you teach me how to open locks? Of course. Many locks have a bolt that you have to push down in order to be able to open the lock. Then you can poke in all directions with your lockpick until the lock is open. But be careful. If you push in the wrong direction, the lockpick may break. Now, considering picking locks isn't really that nuanced of a mechanic in this game, I don't know why they explained the act of picking locks so badly. Because when you're picking locks, I don't know much about it. I've never done it myself, but I know that you don't just probe in all directions. You probe specifically where the tumblers are, and the tumblers are usually on top. And the whole point is that you have to kind of keep the lock turned and, like, under pressure so that the tumblers don't fall back down once you get them out of the way. But that's about all I know. And yeah, it's weird how many different games there are, and not very many of them get the concept of locks right. Huh. That look. You've come for protection money. Protection money? Hmm. Maybe you just have that look. What brings you here? Is this your land? It's me that founds it. Then I use the Bruegel weed that grows here to make beer. What's Bruegel weed? They call it a weed, but it's not. Mostly grows in the swamp or along rivers. But you can find it most anywhere. Looks useless, but you can't get hops out here. Well, not cheap, you can't. And this stuff will do the trick. Is your beer any good? There were those on the mainland who thought so. Barley man's export, they called it. Till the island was cut off. Every time, you think you're getting ahead, life just drags you down. Which reminds me, the camp is waiting for a delivery. I don't suppose you'd be interested in dropping some bottles off for me? Why does everyone here see a new face and just assume I'll do jobs for them? Because you need people that will owe you favours. Favours? You never know when you'll need them. Take these ten bottles to Rachel, the camp cook. I need fifty gold coins for them. So I can pay my damn protection. All right, but one day I'll want to collect that favor. Of course. Here's the beer. Don't forget, fifty gold pieces. Fifty. Yeah, I remember that. What can you tell me about the area around here? You haven't been here long, have you? Let's see. Well, the boys in the camp all work for Don Esther. They're collecting everything they can find made of gold. Don must have a fortune in that temple by now. Can you hold that thought? I really cannot get over this distracting storm. Now, he doesn't really like you being in here, but as long as we're quick, it's not that big a deal. Bruh. Why do these storms last for days? Lord Almighty. You saw he was like hoofing it over to us. Do you work for the Don? Me? <laughs> I've been on this farm all my life. One day, these ruins rise up out of the ground, all over the place. Then Don Esteban comes here. At least he keeps these creatures from the temple away. Where did the gold the Don's collecting come from? From those temple ruins. The ones that rose from the ground. They say there are treasures there. And creatures. Could you teach me to make beer? I suppose. If you have a basic knowledge of alchemy. But it would take you years to learn properly. 
What can you teach me about the basics of alchemy? So he talks about brewing beer, but he doesn't actually teach you that. He just te teaches you standard alchemy. Does the Don ask you to pay for protection? No. It is Commander in Chief. The one that trains his fighters, Brogar. He demands 30 gold coins a month, or he'll take away the guards that look after my farm. So someone's found a way to earn money from this swamp. Maybe I could help you gather some Bruegelweed. Well, it would save me some time. All right. But I need deliveries of 10 plants. I will give you 70 gold coins for every 10 you bring. I have some Bruegelweed for you. Good job. Here's your gold. I can always use more plants. There are plenty of people who like beer. If you find more, you know the price. So for the first batch you give him, you get 50 XP, which is nice. Uh, from this point on, it's just for money. Now, there is a known exploit with this, and cover your ears if you want to protect yourself from dastardly temptation. But, every time you want to, or every time you beat up Robart, you can pick up all the Brugal weed that you gave him. He won't stay angry, and you can just sell it to him again. And that becomes an infinite money exploit. We won't be doing that. Because I won't be relying on exploits in this game. But it's a funny thing to note. Too risky. So you see that this is a pickpocket option. It says it in parentheses. But the interesting thing about this game is that every pickpocket option is actually an extra dialogue. Um, like for all the characters that you whose pockets you're picking. And it can be and it can be kind of funny in its own right. But, if you don't actually have the skill rank required to do it, it just won't let you. It'll tell you it's too risky. Your water wheel is a bit worse for the wear, my friend, but I'm not really sure how it would work anyway. Because with this, uh... Oh, with this dam here, you don't really have much of a current to speak of. Also, don't really know what you need a water wheel for. Unless you have to mill... I guess you have to mill the, um... The grains you're using for your beer, don't you? You know, some bog bodies over there. There's some rotworms over there. They are all tough customers. I don't feel obliged to fight right now. So, he gave us 10 beer to bring to Rachel. And he wants 50 gold in return for them. There's some things to note here. There are ways you can get out on top in this situation. Without anyone being the wiser. I didn't actually collect all this beer last time after I reload, so I'm going to do it again now because we shall need these. The swamp farmer sent me with ten bottles of beer. Ah, oh, I wondered when that was going to arrive. Thank you. That saved me a walk. So, you have options. You can just be generous and give it to her for free. You can tell her the price that Robart actually wanted, and she'll pay you the 50 gold. Or, you can pull the wool over her eyes. Robart told me to collect a hundred gold coins for the beer. A hundred? Has he made this batch with diamonds or something? Robar's an honest man. He wouldn't hike his prices that much. Are you trying to pull a fast one on me? He asked for a hundred, or I was to take the beer back with me. I don't know what Robar's thinking, but beer buys contentment among the men. Here, but I'd better not find out you lied to me. I am uh, pretty sure she never does. But to be honest, we're going to find out. Because I don't think I've ever committed to th this decision. But yes, you get the same amount of XP no matter what you do. So really, there's no reason to be honest there. Now, it is important... When you go back to Robart, that you give him the 50 gold. So if you withhold it, well, you get to keep it, but you don't get the XP for completing the quest. I delivered your beer. Yeah? But did you get my gold? Yes, here it is. That's a sight. Now I can get Brogar off my back. Thank you. I won't forget this. 
consider a favor owed. It is considered. Okay, so confirmed. The experience is always accumulating. It shows... It doesn't start from zero every time you level up. I hate games that do that. It's really the total experience I've ever earned in my life is not a statistic that I felt like I needed to know. Now, as far as Philip and Clayton, we can deal with this now. You look what? tired. And you look ugly. Piss off. Burn! What are you doing here? I'm admiring the view. Great view. That's why we get all these tourists. Ha! Huh. That and the friendly locals. Shouldn't you be standing guard by the swamp farm? Piss off. I don't care what you think of Brogar, but you see, now I am telling you to get out on guard duty. You are? That's right. There's a reason Brogar didn't come himself. Now I'll show you. All right then, you Oh, will you? So Clay and Phil are not fighters that you can fight in the arena, so... This is... You're absolutely at liberty to do it now. Oh, you're cheeky. Why did you jump straight up, dork? I don't care for games that make uh, the dodge button common with another function like jumping or sprinting. Jankward. I always love when you knock them down from behind. Because they almost seem to ragdoll, but they actually don't. They just go into almost a T pose, laying flat on their face, and their left leg bounces. Are you gonna stand guard now? Or are we gonna fall out? I'm going, that's a different I'm going. franchise. So that's done. Well, the funny thing is, Phil actually gets the memo ahead of time. And starts walking down here before we even tell him that Clay's on his way up. Clay is taking over your post. About time. Thanks. There's something for you. you always pay your debts. Now I need a rest. Very good. And we can go tell Broger. Now, you see this dialogue option here. This is not supposed to be here yet. There's a conversation we have later where this is actually supposed to come up in context. I think the reason it's here now is because it is possible for you to accidentally... Well, it is possible with some dialogues to not get that option. Um, but this actually comes up once you've done all the jobs that Brokar has for you. But depending on what you do later, he may not offer it to you, and this seems to be a weird failsafe that just comes up. But, we're not going to click on it until context actually makes it relevant. Clay's taken over from Phil on guard duty. Good. Pair of useless assholes. The men in the camp say you've never won a fair fight. What's the point of a fair fight? You stick by the rules, you get beaten, or dead, or you become a white robe. I'd rather be dead than that. I'm sure lots of people would prefer you dead than in a white robe. You know what I think? I think sarcasm is going to get you killed. So, that's one way you can get Brogar's piece, is with the pickpocket skill. Well, we will be fighting him later, and that would be another opportunity, so it hasn't actually given us anything special here. Why are you making Sam saw wood for you? What business is it of yours, little fish? He needs to hunt. If he doesn't, we'll all starve. And if I don't get wood for my fire, I'll be pissed off. You're pissing into the wind if you wait for Rachel to organize anything. You want something here, you have to take it. Yeah, I'm beginning to understand that. Did you know Ricardo isn't at his post? 
at the swamp excavation site. You telling tales now? Just being helpful. Well, unless you've got orders from me, stay out of my business. Hey, I took the liberty of lifting that piece of the sword blade from you. You thieving bastard. Rob a man when he's down, would you? You'd have done the same to me, Brogar. So I don't know why it gives you that option. Why you, you can just tell him that you straight up stole from him. But that dialogue makes more sense when you've taken it from him after beating him up in the arena. Which you can challenge him now, but he won't actually accept the challenge until you've beaten up all his men. Who are the other men you can duel with uh, for wagers with Craig. Brogar, I challenge you to fight me in the arena. You ain't worth the walk. So that's that. It just doesn't happen until later. Now, Craig, we don't have a pickpocket option for, so we can only get his sword piece by paying for it, or some other means later on. Now, the last thing Brogar has for us is to find his man, Dorgan, who's gotten himself lost, apparently. And just a spoiler, he's gotten himself lost in this direction, but more importantly, we got Lewis, a.k.a. the best NPC in this game. You alone out here? What? Are you alone out here? Yeah, yeah, don't yell, I'm deaf. You seen my, my full of beer glass thing goes smash if you drop it. You mean a beer bottle? That's why I said. You got bad hearing, you know that. The bottle was right. It was here. No, here somewhere. You're drunk. So, I'd rather be dead drunk than dead, and we're all gonna die soon anyway. You wait. When the white robe shows up, we'll all be as dead as... dead men. White robes? Yeah! The white robes. White! From the Inquish... Inquis... <laughs> Inquisition? Yeah! What do white robes want in a swamp? <laughs> They'll end up brown robes. Ha! Stinking. Swamp. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah. And what can you tell me about the white robes? They're everywhere. Uh, came from the sea, from the mainland, and now they're sweeping across the island, wrecking everything. <laughs> Have you ever met a white robe? Are you insane? <laughs> I'd run like a stabbed rat if I ever saw one. I can believe it. Where's that damn bottle? It's my bottle. <laughs> Give it back, you stinking swamp. Don't you think you've had enough? 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 Uh -oh. I can't drink enough. Have you been to the Don's camp? I can tell you once you've spent a couple of days there. You'll start on the source too, believe me. If you'd been there, you'd be me. Why? What's wrong with the camp? Bunch of total arse... Oh, arse... Oh, bastards. Always screwing each other over. I don't trust a single one of them. The worst bastard is Brogar. A nasty piece of... Uh, work. He's a bastard's bastard. Tell me more about this, Brogar. The whole damn place is under his thumb. Official. <laughs> Official. Officially? Fishly, yeah. Fishly, he's just the boss of the fighters. The Don's lieutenant. But he's more than that. Every man there is terrified of him. Even his shadow's scared of him. Because that Brogar, he wants to replace the Don, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he does. Right. You seem to know a lot about Brogar. More than you think, and not just about Brogar. You get me more beer, and then I'll really tell you something. I get you more beer, and I'll be lucky to understand you. I'll see what I can do. Shouldn't you be hunting? Damn it, don't you start. Everything's going to hell, 
and I'm supposed to go hunting? No way! I'd rather sit here and have a little drink a dink a doo I don't know why he added that extra bit to his line there. It's time to stop drinking and start hunting. Move it. Whoa! You're starting to sound unfriendly. If you got some hunting you need doing, do it yourself. Get hunting, or I'll get unpleasant. Wait, wait, wait! I'm waiting. What? Right. Mm. You go and deal with these rats. They're over the... Oh, oh, south of here. If you come back, I'll give you 30 cold groins. Mm. What do you think? Just how I like my groins. You're a hunter and you can't deal with rats. Furry little bastards, look at you funny. Go on, you kill them and I'll pay you. Here, one beer for some information. Hey, 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 you got one. You're beautiful. I'm looking for some pieces of a sword blade. Old, decorated with gold. They're everywhere. Everyone's got one. Well, not Hawkins. Or Jan. Or Rachel. Or Craig has one. I've seen it. It's quite big. Ooh. And that moron has one as well. What moron? Dorgan. He's got a piece, moron. Of course, Brogar has one. You'd have to take him apart to get it. <laughs> and me. I've got one too. You have one. I'll give you a beer for the piece of sword blade. No way! What, what do you think I am, an idiot? It's easily worth two. Here, two beers. Beer! Beer! <laughs> Here you go. So, you you can uh, ask any of these questions. The only one that's really relevant to us is this. I'm looking for Dorgan, the fighter. That moron, he just... He just... <coughs> off into a cave that way, east of here. He went in, just didn't come out. Wouldn't surprise me if something is in there and ate him. Hmm, the damn fool. To the east of here, you say? So, why is everyone so afraid of Brogar? Ha! Why do you think? He's the strongest fighter in the camp. No one can beat him. So we've run out of beers, unfortunately. Hey, who do those beers belong to? What beers? Oh, they're mine. Hey, I can't see them. Where are they? Yeah, you can't see them because I took them right back, fool. And that's how we can get some extra information for free. Here, one beer for some information. Hey, 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 you got one. You're beautiful. How do you think I can get Brogar to fight me in the arena? You can't be serious. Ha! He'll turn you into mincemeat and then dance on all the little pieces. <laughs> Just tell me what I need to know. The only thing that'll make a man like that come out of his shell, little shell, like a snail. <laughs> I like snails, all silver trails in the moonshine. Light. See. <laughs> what will make him come out of his shell? Who? Oh! Yeah. Fear, isn't it? You know, fear of losing control. He wants control of the camp. If someone comes and takes control, that'll piss him off. He'll want to show he's boss. Grind them into the dirt all the way in. Head first. Pull their head off and, you know, down their neck. You try this or, or beat his fighters in the arena. That'll scare him too. Get him out of his shell. Right. Thanks. Makes sense. Here, yeah, you're a hunter. Or well, you were. Teach me something about it. Now you're talking. <laughs> when I got time, I'll do just that. Hmm. I don't have anything to ask at the moment. Uh, that's too bad. Here. Hey! This is your last option here. Here. This bottle's on me. 
I thank you. You are a gentleman, sir. A poet, and you're definitely not an asshole. Thanks. Man, well, that last one, he gets extra classy. What a fellow. All right, well, here are them scurrying Sonic the Hedgehogs over here. Now, these guys get quite annoying. Oh, they dance, though. Because they just kind of, like, start trading places. And obviously, Sting Rats, seeing as their whole body is an attack, they don't really have much of a telegraph. And they do love to stun lock you. And nothing stops them all from attacking at the same time, although generally their AI tries to be sportsmanlike about it. Well, luckily, they don't really have any defenses of their own, so as long as you don't keep knocking them out of reach, you can just kind of lay into them. Those furry little rats you were worried about, they won't be looking at you funny again. Hey, that was fast. You're a pretty good hunter. Here, 30 gold coins. That's only 25. Yeah? Oh, well, <laughs> it's all I've got. I had 30 once. Man. I thought you were a gentleman. So, this here is the cave where he says Dorgan disappeared into. Now, the annoying thing about this cave, it is absolutely crowded with the grave moths. And they like to swarm you. So, you can try and get away by waiting for them to, like, kind of flutter off far enough away that you can kind of slip past. Hope for the best. But unfortunately, that one there has decided he's just going to sit on top of that corpse that we need to get to. And now he's done that, so that's really annoying. All you gotta do is reach Dorgan here. Take all. Get to the corner. If you wanna reset their aggro. And then loot this if you care. And you can kinda try and make your way back out. We will revisit this cave in the future. It's just fighting all these things is not really worth it right now. It is possible. I have done it many times. But they're very annoying. You can, you can try and use the tunnel here to um, sort of funnel them. But you're going to have to keep like backing up and eventually you're going to be out in the open where they storm you again. Your other option is, of course, lead them over to Lewis, but... Classic Piranobite's rules, if he deals a killing blow on any enemy you've been fighting, you don't get the XP for it. So that's that. Now, Dorgan had this interesting list on him. Still need to collect from Robart, Obel, Lewis, Hawkins, Enrico, Dwight, Doug, Danny, and Oscar. Well, what do you suppose he was collecting? I found Dorgan. Yeah? Where is the lazy bastard? He's dead. His body's in a cave near the swamp. Oh, well. If he keeps some swamp creature fading off my back, it'll be the first useful thing he's done. Now, did he have anything on him? Anything at all? So you can tell him about the gold, but he doesn't actually expect you to give it to him, which is surprising. But the reason for that is he has something actually more of Brogar's interest. Yes, I found a very interesting list in his pocket. Did you now? And where is it? I didn't search the body. You expect me to believe you didn't check him? You didn't go through his pockets for gold? I'm not into strip searching corpses. I'll leave that to you. So. The reason I did that is because we can still give it to him now, but I had forgotten that we actually ought to show it to Rachel first. Even though that will make him angry. But... We get more XP for doing it. By the way. Now, hold off on blabbing on Craig. We definitely want to get through his uh, entire arena before we risk that. 
Dorgan, one of Brogar's people, had this list on him. Can I see it, please? Seems Dorgan was helping Brogar to pocket Esteban's gold. Where is he now? Dead. I found him in a cave near the swamp. This list will help. We'll need more evidence, though, if we're to persuade Esteban Brogar is working for his own interests. So there's your 50 XP. That's really all we needed to do. But we did that kind of out of order because we were meant to use this line first. Brogar is collecting protection money from the people here in the camp. What? Are you sure? Oh, what do you think that list was? I'd be surprised if he were being that brazen about it on his own doorstep. Do you have proof? Solid proof. If you could get me something concrete, that would help things here a lot. I think that list was pretty concrete, but hey. Lewis claims Brogar wants to replace the Dawn. Brogar's always been trouble, but since we've been in this swamp, Esteban's absence has really lowered morale. It gets tongues wagging and hands lazy. I wish he could see that. Talk to the men. This could be just the thing to get Esteban going again. Show him how bad things have got. But I'm going to need more proof than the word of a drunken hunter. Too risky. Alas, we cannot pick her pocket. Getting hot flushes. What do you think that's about? Getting hot flashes? I guess you're not having kids now. All right, here's the list Dorgan had. You're smart. Were you smart enough not to tell anyone else about this list? I didn't tell anyone. And it'll stay that way if you know what's good for you. Anything else for me to do? Well, maybe one thing, if you're up to it. Try me. Okay. But don't say I didn't warn you. Have you ever collected funds generously donated by those grateful for their security? Hmm. Generously donated security funds. You mean protection money. Shush! Not so bloody loud! Who are you protecting? What do you care? You want me to do this job or not? Hmm. Maybe you can succeed where that damn Dorgan failed. Well, all the folks in this camp who ain't fighters, go and tell them their monthly payment is due. Collect it, then bring the gold back to me. Simple. I'll take the job. But can I trust you? Could be you're a shifty little fish. I'll do it. Don't worry. Yeah, I want it done, and I want it done right. So about that little job I'm doing for you? What if I run into problems? It's your job, so it's your problem. I'm owed 200 gold. I don't care how you get it. Squeeze it out of them or find it another way. But don't come back with any less. Right. Should I collect money from Sam? No, Sam works for me. Good man. Knows the value of being discreet about his work. Got it. Who exactly am I meant to be collecting from? You got a hole in your head? Anyone who isn't one of my boys. Oscar the Smith, the workers, Hawkins, Enrico, Brannan and Dwight, the hunters, Doug and Lewis, and that swamp farmer, Robar, and his farmhand, Obel. And hurry it up. I can't help but notice that every time they mention Robart, they omit the T and just say Robar, as in the king from Gothic. Very strange, that. About Brogar. Brogar's demanding protection money from people and wants me to collect it. Hmm. You need Brogar on your side, but you don't want to end up like Dorgan. Dorgan? Dorgan was the last one to collect protection money for Brogar. Now he's disappeared. Dorgan is dead. I found him in a cave. Well, protection rackets aren't known for being safe things to get involved in. It looked like wild animals had killed him. Be careful. You don't want to end up like that. Thanks. That advice isn't exactly easy to follow. Yeah, I don't really understand how he ended up in that cave while collecting protection money. Uh, unless... One of his marks duped him into there or something. Brogar's fighters are staging fights in the arena. Would the Don approve of that? You'd have to ask Rachel. But it might be something you can hold against Brogar. You could use it to stop Brogar. If you challenged him to combat and won, 
That would embarrass him in front of everyone. But it wouldn't be easy. That's an understatement. Well, you started on this path. Every man chooses his destination. Where are you going? Whatever happens, I'll need to train. A man needs skills, and with the path you've chosen, you'll need more skills than most. There is no way I can beat Brogar with this useless equipment. If you're after a better blade, Oscar the Smith will sell you one. If that fails, you'll need another line of attack. Magic. Try talking to Robart, the swamp farmer. He knows about magic, and as he's outside the camp, people won't hear you buying stuff. Word has it that Brogar wants to replace the Don. That much is obvious. There isn't a man in the place who hasn't worked that out. But it's not something anyone says out loud. Words can get you killed. The temple guard wouldn't let me in. Do you think he'd invite you in for a beer? He's a guard, remember? You'd have to have something for the Don. A gift, information, something valuable. What sort of gifts? Oscar the Smith will tell you. He's helped a lot of people impress the Don. Oscar's good with gold. And as I say, the Don rather likes unusual things that glitter. The Don's wife, um, Rachel, seems tense about something. The Don put her in charge of this mess, and if she can't feed people, how can she control anything else? Brogar wants the Don out of the way. Proving Rachel useless only helps him. About your hunting. Lewis isn't going to stop drinking anytime soon. I know. But when he's sober, or even when he's half cut, he's a damn good hunter. Both your hunters are back out doing their job. Are they? You work fast. Your team's not the best I've seen. You take what you find. They're what I found. As for your training, maybe I can help. Too risky. Well, that's it. I like how Sam is our, like, our yes man here. As we feign being a yes man for Brogar, they're like paces apart from each other. There's no way Brogar hasn't heard us talking about him. But anyway, this all happened a lot quicker than I expected. Um, as in, the episode is basically over now. I didn't expect all that to take an hour, but that's how it is. Now, I don't intend to have a month in between episodes every time. Now, the, the last video I made was the Gothic Scrolls video. So that's why that took so long. Um, so hopefully I can get these out weekly or bi-weekly, just kind of depending on well how IRL stuff does. The next episode, we're going to do the arena bits. We're going to do the extortion racket for Brogar. And hopefully get this sword assembled and find our way into the temple and speak with the Don. And uh, that basically should wrap up our business here in the swamp for the for the foreseeable future. But until next time, have yourselves a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.